such a privilege and pride bringing this program to you every week. So much has happened in seven days and we're here to share some with you. <laughs> My name is Chioma Okwara. Welcome to Art and Leisure. We're starting with poetry. Odia Ufemu is a veteran poet. He's in his 60s and he's written poems and plays all his life. He's going to read one of the poems he wrote when he was much younger. Over to you, sir. When you are much younger, you write two kinds of poetry. Love poetry and revolutionary poetry. And sometimes the revolutionary poetry is just like the love poetry. I read the one that everybody knows I like to read. You are the sandstorm beneath my skin. The salt in the raw bleeding flesh. You are the flagellation and the hell. You are the hurricane of my restless nights. The conversation that soon becomes an argument. You are the flagellation and the hell. Into your cup, my life runs ever flowingly. Into your agitated arms, my dural mirror. You are the flagellation and the hell. And when I kneel, it is for you I crave. You are my son. I know no other. You are the flagellation at the herb, the hurricane of my sleepless nights. The hurricane of my sleepless nights? Who wants a sleepless night? <laughs> Please, I want a restful night. Poets and their choice of words. Thank you so much, legendary Odia Ufemu. Now, let's talk about our future, our children. I've discovered that it doesn't take much to make a child happy. Just provide the basics and you get a big smile and a hug. What else do you want? <laughs> Mrs. Kumbi Oshinoiki and her team at Kumbi's Place provided a platform for children to express themselves and trust young people. They weren't shy. Take a look. They came from different nursery, primary and secondary schools in Lagos. In this competitive event, they danced, acted, sang and marched. We themed this Children's Day, We Are The World, and the reality is that children are our future, and that anybody who's trying to um, prevent children from having a decent upbringing, decent education, is effectively trying to make us an extinct people. And I felt that we couldn't allow ourselves to be cowered by the terrorists who are trying to force us into a way of life that we don't, we're not you know, interested in at all. 
And so we went ahead with today's Children's Day, very, very mindful of the um, girls who are not able to celebrate as freely as we can celebrate here. And we're also making a declaration that children will continue to be the future, that we're not going to allow anybody to um, stop children from having the best possible opportunities for their lives. They were judged on the criteria of relevance to the theme, appearance, creativity, delivery, and timekeeping. The first, second, and third place winners were rewarded. The panel of judges made up of a seasoned educationist and accomplished actors had fun watching these young ones perform. As Ireti Fuji House of Commotion, <laughs> children are my best fans, you know. I love being with them because they are my fans. And the more they encourage me, the more I do more than what they even expect from me. Working with kids is always very exciting. And for every occasion, you learn a new thing. One thing that has been very fascinating for me is the fact that these kids are not only politically conscious, but they're also socially aware about the happenings in their country. I was particularly thrilled that without prompting, they brought in the Bring Back Our Girls campaign. Well, they definitely demonstrated an awareness. Um, at the end of the day, there's only so much that children will know. But I was very happy that there was a lot of reference to Bring Back Our Girls, a lot of reference to, you know, we are the world, we are the future. And yes, I was very happy with the creativity that a lot of the schools displayed today. Kumbi's Place provides facilities for leisure and recreation. I enjoying it today because it's exciting, it's very fun, there are a lot of games everywhere. We did plenty of things. We dance, we sing, we even march and play. We play, we dance, we do matching competition, training, everything and having fun with people. I enjoy myself today. I do many play. I like this place. Many believe that schoolwork and extracurricular activities help in raising a total child. Welcome back. Our children, our future. Now to a veteran artist who likes to work with what you and I term waste. He went to the dump site to look for cans, can tabs, and other discarded materials. What did he do with them? Of course, he produced beautiful artworks with them. <laughs> I'm talking about costly artworks. Some go for as much as half a million naira, some more than that. He's a veteran artist. What do you expect? <laughs> Let's see Rakui Basharu's solo exhibition. Rakui Basharu is inspired by happenings around him. He's been working with discarded materials for 17 years now. He sees Nigerians as a people who throw away things that can be recycled. He titled the solo exhibition Evolving Through Waste. By evolving through waste, could be looked at from two perspectives. One is either me as an individual have been involving through waste, passing through waste, you know, going through a nation where we waste virtually everything, and I'm still able to put my acts together to get to where I am now, to be focused as to where I'm going. That's one way of looking at it. Then you can look at it from the other perspective that I'm using the waste as a material to advance my work while I'm evolving through, you know, the waste or the wasteful environment in which I, I find myself. He got his materials from the dump site. He went in search of cans and can taps. I cleaned them up, I washed them with soap, you know, dried them out. I selected the good ones out of them. Those that I think they're not good, I kept them somewhere. Because this may not be the right time for me to use those. Not as if, it's not as if to say they are not good, really, but they may not be appropriate for this particular exhibition. I could find them useful in some other work, so I kept them somewhere instead of throwing them away. The ones that you see colors, that's the way they came. But it's only that I don't have too many of those out there. But I source for them because I now want to introduce the colors. They are the original colors, they are not painted. These former residents of the West Bay are about to find their way into choice homes because of their new status. That's the work of an artist. In the hands of a creative person, you can ask the material to do whatever you want the materials to do. I'll give you a very good example. The one right behind me here that I call frozen blessings. Nigerians, we, we believe that we are blessed. 
we believe that something, some miracle of things is going to happen and start showering blessings on Nigeria. But the, the blessing was coming. At some point, it got, bro- it got frozen. And that's why you have the work here, you know, that you see things that are dropping, but they are frozen. They are almost about touching the, the image-like, you know, reclining figure that is in the box. But they got stuck at some point. They're not touching that image. I have a couple of works I call piecemeal, and I have a lot of decorated, fanciful spoons, you know, on those works, which means I'm calling Nigerians that we should all have piecemeal. Pick your own spoon and have your own bite of the piecemeal. In a sense, I'm saying no matter who you are, no matter where you are in Nigeria, we all deserve to be given equal opportunity to enjoy the fruit or the blessings that we have. And of course, I have works that I call seek and hide. If something is not working for you well, you have to look for what will work for you. You can't just give up and say, since that is not working for you, you're going to give up, or somebody else is going to assist you in making that things happen. It's not always government that's going to make things happen. Who is the government? We are the government. People are the government. So individual person can begin to look at himself or herself and say, whatever change I'm asking for should start with me. I have the one I call transparency. You know, there's no hiding place for anybody. What was done in the dark, whether we like it or not, eventually is going to come to light. We need to be transparent. We need to tell ourselves nothing but the truth. Nigerians, we are very good at coining you know, things. Instead of saying we have problems, we have challenges. If you have problems, we have problems. Let's call it problems. Let's call it spade a spade so that we can deal with it. But by saying we have challenges, we seem to we water it down as if the product thing is not, it's not really affecting our lives. Problems are problems. We must solve them. When you hear black gold, ordinarily people think we're talking about the petroleum. Yes, we're talking about that. But truly speaking, our black gold seems to be turning black for real. So we need to watch all this. We all know today a lot of Nigerians, they want money, they don't want to work. You know, kind of a thing. Even those who work, they want more and more and more and more and more. You know, at the end of it all, what's going to happen to you? You're going to leave all those things behind and you're going to be gone. So I have one that I call greed. I have what I call reconstruction. When things are bad, we need to reconstruct. You can't just close our eyes and say we're not going to do anything. You should begin to do things that will make that thing better again. I have the ones that are called stars in my city. As bad, as terrible as you think the situation in Nigeria is, we still have a lot of good things around us. We still have brilliant, intelligent, good people among us. So we should not always focus on the bad things. We should always look at the brighter side of life. If you look at the work, I have bottles filled with dust of different colors. And I'm saying, at the end of the day, as a human being, as a Nigerian, what's going to be your story when you are gone? Materials used for this work include glass, stainless, metal, plastic, wood, wood dust, aluminum, and soda cans. Art enthusiasts praise him for his originality. When it comes to Rakib, uh, it's never a disappointment. Rakib always Whenever he has a show, uh, it's always a show I look uh, forward to seeing because he's always reinventing himself. Rocky Bashoro, as you've rightly said, is one of the veterans we have uh, in an art field. He's been around for many years. He's one of the leading and most established artists on the Lagos um, contemporary art space. We're very proud to be um, associated with him. We're very proud to put up this exhibition, Evolving Through Waste. Uh, not only has he is he one of the um, leading artists on the circuit, but a lot of artists have passed through him. He's been at Diaba Tech for over 20 years, and he's been a lecturer, and he's been able to impart some of this, his knowledge, you know, into um, um, the students and some of the young graduates that we see out uh, on the contemporary circuit. Rakui Basharu is a chief lecturer at Yaba College of Technology. He teaches 400 level students graphics in three-dimensional design. Still, he finds time to do studio work. He's already working on his next exhibition. The last five, six years, I've been exhibiting every year. My next year, I've, even, I've already even started work towards that. And I'm calling that evolving in the round. The soda can I'm using in a very entirely different manner. That's what I'll be showing next year. Rakui Basharu has been a sculptor for 30 years. Wood, metal, and other materials obey his command. He makes strong statements with them. We need to partner with the government. I know the Lagos government is talking about recycling. We have some points, depot where you can drop certain things, like things that are paper, things that are plastic, things that are bottles and all that. We have to be involved in sorting those things out into their respective you know, categories where they belong. 
and trashing them or recycling them as appropriate or giving them out to those organizations who will now take them for that to recycle. The one I have right behind me that I call Waste Gift. Incidentally, where I collect my waste from, these materials from, they compress them in bales bigger than what I have behind me and they ship them to China and they turn them back into ingots. They melt them back and they were, they were cutting this thing back to China, collecting it in Nigeria and sending it back to China. So that is what I'm preaching, that's what I'm saying. I know definitely as individual, you go to, whether you like it, you're gonna have some waste around you as time goes on, but those waste could also be converted, reconverted into something else. I'm not saying this as waste. I'm not thinking of waste to wealth or trash to treasure. I'm seeing them as materials that on their own are also virgin material you can use to create or do some other works. So, have a rethink and start making money from your waste. The Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization is in the news again. This time around, we're focusing on the man at the helm of affairs. Watch this. Professor Gabriel Olatunde Babawale is a professor of political economy in the Department of Political Science, University of Lagos. He became the director and chief executive officer of the Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization eight years ago. CBAC, which is 35 years old, was established in fulfillment of Nigeria's pledge to keep the materials used during Festac 77 in trust for the 59 black and African countries and communities which participated in the festival. CBAC has a library, archival collections, audiovisual library, art gallery, Ambassador Shego Lushola Resource Center, and a Hall of Fame. As an outstanding administrator, Professor Tunde Babawale has organized seven international conferences for students and scholars of Africa and the African diaspora studies. In 2010, he facilitated the signing of a memorandum of understanding between Nigeria and Brazil. Sibak, under his leadership, has been transformed into a world-class art and culture agency. He has won many awards. At his hometown, Inisha, in Oshun State, he was conferred with the title Babagunwa of Inisha Land by His Royal Majesty Joseph Oyedele the Olunisha of Inisha Land. I feel fulfilled because uh, no matter how well you try elsewhere, I believe that charity begins at home and the most important honor you can receive is the honor given to you by your people. Uh, a man who is respected abroad and not respected at home uh, has less than what he should have. And I thank God for the opportunity to be honored by my people. I thank the Ulu Nisha for making it uh, uh, possible for us to have this day and for uh, singling me out for honor. And the entire people of Nisha who also supported the Kabis and the Ulu Nisha in council for thinking that I deserve the kind of honor that I've got. His wife is now Yeye Bobagunwa. Bobagunwa means the man who sits with the king in council or the special advisor to the king. This honor will make him do more for his community. It's a challenge. A challenge for me to do more than I've been doing for the town and an opportunity for me to further express myself in terms of uh, contributing to the development and the growth of the town. But this I cannot do alone. I can only do it in conjunction with others. And I have pledged in the presence of Olu Nisha and the entire people that I will devote uh, the better part of my life to serving the people uh, in whichever way they think I can do. And whatever form of assistance God gives me the power to give, I am going to give to the people. Friends, colleagues, and well-wishers came to rejoice with him. Professor Baba, uh, Tunde Bababale, Allah Tunde Bababale, is a very amiable person. I have known him for more than 36 years, and in the course of 36 years, I have known him to be consistent. Consistent in his approach to life, consistent in his relationship, and consistent in commitment to excellence in whatever he does. That is one thing about him. I can equally say that he has invested a lot in his friends. He believes in his friends and is committed to them and to their, to, to their ultimate progress in life. 
The Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization has a strategic mandate to preserve, promote, and propagate African cultural heritage. The Director General says he's committed to achieving that. So, how should Professor Tunde Babawale be addressed henceforth? There's no other way of addressing me than to call me a chief. But I think uh, uh, I'm okay the way I am. I'm okay the way I am. I feel happy for today. I feel fulfilled. I am, and I feel humbled as well. Congratulations, sir. Indeed, CBAC is a world art and culture agency. I've enjoyed our reports today. <laughs> Join us same time next week for another rich edition. You can watch my episodes on our website, www.artandleisure.com.ng. Please leave comments afterwards. <laughs> my name is Chioma Okpara. Love yourself. Love Nigeria. Thank you.